Welcome parents to Physical Science. My name is Mr. Huang, and we are gonna get started by talking about who exactly I am. My name is Mr. Huang, and I am actually a first year teacher at Hoffman Estates. This is my second year teaching physics. Um, I taught chemistry for two years before coming here, uh, and I am also a math science tutor and a gymnastics coach at Stevenson High School. I graduated from Elk Grove in 2008, so I am from this area, kind of. I graduated from Loyola University of Chicago with a bachelor's in physics and a master's in chemistry. I, I spent a lot of time at Loyola, so eventually I got sick of the place and went to DePaul University to get my second master's in secondary education. This degree is what allows me to sit in front of this computer screen and talk into the screen to record this video, but also to talk to your lovely students uh, whenever it is class time. To the left there, you can see a picture of me with, my, with one of my dogs. His name is Ghost. He is a Bedlington Terrier Poodle Mix, and I love him to death. The best method to reach me would be through my email. My email is ehuang at d211.org. Please, please, please email me with whatever concern that you may have or any question. I am more than happy to respond and communicate with any of you about anything uh, you, you'd like me to. Uh, also, please email me if you'd like to set up a Zoom meeting. We can meet and talk about, about any concern or question that you may have. I am pretty good about responding to email. I usually respond by the next school day. Um, if I don't respond by the next school day, please email me again. It is possible that your email got buried in you know, the, the dozens of emails I receive a day. So what topics does physical science include? So chemistry is one big part of physical science. Uh, so we'll be talking about the periodic table, chemicals, and, and reactions, and things like that. We'll also be talking quite a bit about physics. So we'll be talking about uh, motion, and uh, forces, and momentum, and uh, energy, all sorts of things like that. And also uh, a little bits and pieces from other sciences that aren't in the typical chemistry or physics curriculum. If you get one thing out of today's video, I, it would be to encourage your students not to get discouraged. Uh, science is often a class where many students struggle initially, but the success comes with the effort and time put in. Uh, I, I promise that uh, the level of, of, of success in science is directly tied to the level of effort and time put into learning these subjects of the class. <clears throat> so that's pretty much it for my video for today. However, if you want to get a, a little sample or a taste of how I teach, continue on for a mini physics lesson that I put together. All right, so here's a diagram of the sun and the earth. This is definitely not to scale. The sun is much, much bigger than Earth. Uh, the sun gives off light, and the light comes towards Earth. Uh, the sun gives off white light, which is composed of all the colors of the rainbow. However, just for simplicity, and just so I don't have to draw so many things on this uh, PowerPoint here, uh, we're going to simplify that down to red, green, and blue. And so these light rays come in from the sun and they hit the earth pretty much parallel uh, because the sun is so far away. And this blue dotted line represents the atmosphere of the earth. And so the question is, what effect does the atmosphere have on the incoming light? Well, with blue light, the wavelength of blue light is so short that it interacts very readily with the molecules with the, uh, in the atmosphere. So when blue light hits the atmosphere, the light interacts with all these particles, all these molecules, all these gas particles, and it scatters very readily. It scatters a bunch, um, and so you have, a, you have blue light scattering all over the place. Green light has a slightly longer wavelength, and it does scatter, but definitely not as much as blue light. You're going to get more green light coming through than you do blue light. 
And then red light has a very long wavelength comparatively, and so it barely scatters, and so most of the red light just comes right through. So when they all come together, you get a bunch of blue light scattering, uh, and the red and green light, red light mostly comes through, green light scatters a little bit. And so let's consider these two observers here. So this person on the bottom here has the light rays directly above head. And so what time would this person, what, what time is it for this person? If the light is directly overhead, the question is what time is it for this person? And, and here I am expecting an answer from my computer with no one on the other side. The time for this person would be 12 p.m. or noon because the light is directly overhead. And here you have a quarter of an Earth's rotation away, which would be about six hours away from 12 p.m. So we could say this is 6 a.m. or 6 p.m., depending on how the Earth is rotating on this diagram. But generally, this person will be experiencing a sunset or a sunrise, depending on an a.m. or p.m. And this person is noon, so the sun is directly overhead. And so when this person looks off into the sky, as long as he doesn't look directly into the sun, this person will see mostly blue light because the blue light is getting scattered everywhere. And so when this person looks off away from the sun, he will see mostly blue light because the blue light is being scattered and it's being scattered all over the place. Whereas the red, red light is just basically coming directly down uh, same with the green light. So if this person looks directly at the sun, which no one should do, uh, he will see mostly red with a little bit of green. Uh, red and green together is yellow light. But now let's consider this person. This person, for the light rays to reach him, it requires the light to go through much more of the atmosphere than this person right here. And so what happens is that the blue light pretty much scatters all the way before even reaching this person. Blue light scatters very readily, uh, and therefore it all scatters away before reaching this person. Whereas the green light, there's some scattering, but green light still kind of reaches this person. Uh, but this person will definitely see mostly red light here. And so the red light kind of just cuts through the atmosphere, barely scatters at all, and so the red light will reach this person. And this is why during a sunset or a sunrise, you see mostly red light surrounding the sun. Thank you for attending my mini lesson.